What I did here is prepare four different solver setups, just different variations of the setup we just built with small details. And I just want to go over them so you know what kind of tricks you can use in here. The first one, let's highlight this and let it run. When we dive into that solver, the thing that I did is I attached a VDB resample before going into the analysis node that calculates a gradient and the curvature. And the VDB resample, when set up like this, using voxel scale only, you can dial in a multiplication factor of how the voxel scale will be modified. And I multiplied the voxel scale by 2, which means I actually lowered the resolution because my voxels got bigger now. So what I'm doing each step is I'm downsampling my incoming SDF and then calculating gradient and curvature from it. So this is actually less detail and less higher frequencies than my standard solution that I had. So this is one trick that you can do because this speeds up all this calculation in here and also has the nice side effect of getting rid of some very high frequency detail that you sometimes do, just do not want. This is our standard setup. This is the same thing that we built in the previous video. This here is kind of important because what it in here is within the volume ball. When we import our gradient that we calculated, I attach a normalize saw and this takes care of normalizing the gradient. So each vector has a length of exactly one and they only differ in the direction that they point. And this is very useful for making sure that your gradient vectors have the same length at each voxel at each sample position. This is important because you're going to multiply them with the curvature. So the optimal thing to have would be vectors of length one that we then scale using the curvature. And the last thing that we have, you've seen that also in the previous video, you say VDB smooth here to smooth out the resulting vector field that we calculated from gradient and curvature before feeding it into the VDB effect and thus also getting rid of some high frequency details. So it's in a way similar to the setup with the resample node, yet it uses a full resolution vector field and just blurs that out. So let's take this setup where we normalize the gradient in the volume up so that it's always resulting in vectors of a length of one, delete all the other solver setups. And let's work on this. So how about the idea of advecting this volume, not only by its gradient or not by its gradient, but by something very beloved to us, a curl noise. In order to do that, the first thing we need to do is create a volume, a three-dimensional field containing the curl noise. And there are several ways of doing this. I'm going to use VDB tools. In this case, I think the speed difference could be negligible. So you could also do that with standard Houdini volume tools. But let's stick to the topic and use VDB tools for this. So what I want to do is drop down a VDB. And in here, I'm going to create a fog volume and it's going to be of a vector float class. So it's going to store a vector. Its voxel size should be 0.02. And I would like to create this with a frustrum. So I would like to set its size directly. Let's set the voxel size here by size 0.02. And let's dial the size up to be 5 by 5 by 5. So when I highlight this, I see this cube here giving me the size of my VDB volume that I just created. Let's just go with the platonic here. Something like this. Now, I could feel tempted to try and write the vector field, the curl noise, directly into that volume. Let's just try that. But before we do that, let's just middle mouse over this. And we see our volume hasn't got a name yet. So let's just give this a name and call it Vel for velocity. Middle mouse again. And we see it's now got a name. However, it is zero by zero by zero voxels in dimension. And that is weird because, I mean, I specified it to be of size five by five by five. So what's happening here? What we created is an empty volume. And as VDBs try to be efficient, they don't store empty voxels. So we just created an empty container, which does not even contain voxels that contain anything. It just does not contain anything at all. So in order to fix this and tell the VDB that it should contain voxels, which just do not store a value yet, we need another node called VDB activate. So why this up in here? And this can activate a given region of our VDB. So in our case, let's just activate the whole cube of size 555. Five, five. We can see now this has a different color. We hover over it and we can see now we created a volume containing 251 by 251 by 251 voxels of the type vector with three dimensions. So now we are ready to write in a curl noise in there. We do that with the volume up again, wire up our volume. Just make sure the volume name is Vel. So let's dive into the volume bop. Get rid of this output here, just delete it. And the first thing is we're going to drop down a bind export. 
and we want to export vel in the end. That is for writing back our velocity into the VDB. So let's create a curl noise by dropping down a curl node, wire up the position in here and the output in here. Now all I need to do is promote those parameters that I need to drive the curl noise appearance by middle mouse clicking on those ports here and going to promote parameter, thus taking care of me being able to, whoops, me being able to dial in the parameters when I'm outside of this VOP, like so. Okay, this takes a while and we now have a curl noise field stored in here. So let's pipe that into the solver in here. So that comes through the input too. And let's use this curl noise field inside our volume bob. And instead of sampling the gradient, which comes in through the port one of our volume bob, let's sample in the velocity, the curl noise that comes in through the input three here. And let's just not go through this multiplication with the curvature, but input this straight. So what we can see now when hitting play is this volume deforming through our curl noise which already is kind of nice, but the crazy stuff starts to happen as soon as we get our curvature back in. And by the way, this is one of those typical visualization bugs with volumes. And in order to get rid of that, I'm gonna restart Houdini. Now a simple save in this case, just fixed it. So let's bring back in the curvature and just wire up this multiply sop because we already set it up and hit play again. And what's happening now is we've got bigger curvature we are advecting this volume more intensively through our curl noise field, yielding those extremely interesting shapes and forms. Let's maybe increase the volume resolution a bit so we can see a bit more detail here. Like that, and hit play again. And I think in order to prevent those artifacts here around these edges, I should try smoothing out the curvature itself. So in the solver, let's drop down a smooth VDB stop here after we calculated the curvature, wire this in here and let's increase the voxel filter radius like that, head back up one level, hit play again. And maybe this was a bit too strong of a smoothing, so let's dial it down a bit to only smooth two voxels. Well, that looks as if we're getting somewhere. And I think at this stage, it's down to dialing in the correct values that yield proper results. A few things that I did here. On the one hand, I think an icosahedron is not the right shape for this, so a tetrahedron might work better. On the other hand, what I did was in the solver, uh, in the volume bob, I promoted these two parameters from the fit node, the source minimum and max, promoted that up one level so I could dial them in sync with the ramp. And now I set it up to expect a minimum value of a curvature of one and a maximum value of seven. Also, I disabled the smoothing of the curvature, but enabled the smoothing of the resulting VDB, set that to a mean value smooth with just one voxel radius and one iteration. And also what I did over here with the help of a grid and a volume trail, I just built a quick visualization gizmo so I can visualize the curl noise that's happening here that I'm generating so I can tweak this. And although this disappears after some iterations, oops, let's switch to real time toggle. After it disappears after a few iterations, I find this quite nice. And I think this is a good starting point for some more advanced setups.